Hello, good day and welcome to Thinking and Working Scientifically. Today we are looking at Earth's activities, the Earth's structure and tectonic plates. The series covers both Cambridge Checkpoint and Pearson Edexels examination as well as a national curriculum. So sit back, bring out your study book and let's go on. Do you know that the Earth is divided into boundaries which we don't seem to see? These boundaries are called tectonic plates. And do you know that as you go down towards the center of the Earth, it is also divided into layers? Today we shall be looking at this and how they trigger some natural phenomena. So it's time to go. You know the Earth is spinning, you're familiar with the rotation and revolution of the Earth. But as it spins, does it spill out anything? Well, let's find out what it spills, if there is anything the Earth spills. But before we do this, it's very important we know what's happening underneath the Earth. Oh, yeah, what you're looking at is actually what's going on under you, right where you are. Standing, sitting, sleeping, whatever you're doing, deep down under you, this is happening. But hey, Mr. Matthew, I don't feel anything. You don't feel anything because of the thickness of the earth's layer. But deep down, a lot is going on. So, let's find out how hot it is down there and what it is that is really happening. So, before we do this, we need to know this. What is under there? You can just point to say there is just one thing under there. The Earth is divided into layers and four basic layers. Look at this. The Earth is divided into four basic layers. Look at the videos and you can see the layers. So you can see that where we are, the edge cross, which is the surface, is very thin compared to the thickness of the earth. So let's get to know the four main layers. The four main layers are 1. The crust. 2. The mantle. 3. The outer core. And 4. The inner core. So let's repeat them. The crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. A. What is the crust? It's very simple. It is the outermost layer of the Earth and it has temperature that ranges from even negative degrees Celsius, zero up to 200 to 400 degrees Celsius as you go deep down the Earth crust. How about the mantle? A. The mantle is quite, quite, quite hot. Okay? It ranges from 1000 degrees Celsius to 3,700 degrees Celsius. Unbelievable. Imagine someone falling down there. <laughs> you don't want to imagine what happens down there. And what are some of the minerals we have in the mantle? The mantle has such minerals as your silicate, your magnesium oxide, your iron, your aluminium, calcium, sodium, and potassium. Remember, these are the chemical formula for these compounds and elements. Let's repeat them. Silicates, magnesium oxide, Iron, aluminium, calcium, sodium, and potassium. How about the outer core? Oh, it gets hotter as we go deeper. The outer core has temperature from as high as 4,500 degrees Celsius to 5,500 degrees Celsius. Quite, quite hot. And what is, this, what is it made of? It's very important you know this. The outer core is made of liquid iron and nickel liquid or molten iron and nickel very important the outer core is made of liquid or molten iron and nickel and it has temperature as high as 4500 degrees celsius to 5500 degrees celsius and then we have finally the innermost part of the earth which is called the inner core hey you gotta hear this the inner core has temperature as high as 5200 degrees celsius to 6,000 degrees Celsius and 
Unlike the outer core, which is liquid or molten, the inner core is actually solid. The inner core is made of solid iron and nickel. You may be wondering, it's supposed to be liquid. Hey, no. Why is it solid? It is solid because there is so much pressure that is restraining the solid from melting. The pressure deep down there is very high that it is restraining the solid iron from melting. That is why down the inner core it is solid even though it is hotter than the outer core. So now you know it, we are good to go. Look at what you're seeing. That's the earth actually. But did you know that's actually how it is? You never knew. You thought it was just one big entity. No, the earth is divided into boundaries, as you can see. And these boundaries are called tectonic plates. Okay, tectonic plates. The tectonic plates are also called the lithospheric plates. Tectonic plates are also called the lithospheric plates. And you can see them. You can actually want to look at them. Let's see, there's a tectonic plate. These are all plates. These are not. These and other these, but you know, these are both minor and major tectonic plates. You can see the very large ones called the major ones, and then you have the smaller ones, which are the minor ones. These are minor, these are major. You can see them. So, how many major tectonic plates do we have? We have seven major tectonic plates. Again, we have seven major tectonic plates, and these are the Eurasian plates. Take note, the Eurasian plates. We have the Indo-Australian plates. We have the Antarctic plates. We have the African plates. We have the North American plates. We have the South American plates. And we have the Pacific plates. So let's go over them once more. The Eurasian plates. The Indo-Australian plates. The Antarctic plates, the African plates, the North American plates, the South American plates, and the Pacific plates. The Pacific plate covers both this and this side, okay? Remember the Earth, when folded to form the spheroid, this side you're seeing on the right is part of the left. This side on the right is part of the left. So there are seven major tectonic plates. Quick, let's rush over them as fast as we can. The Eurasian plate, Indo-Australian plate, the Antarctic plate, the African plate, the North American plate, the South American plate, and the Pacific plate. These are the seven major tectonic plates. Remember the tectonic plates are also called the lithospheric plates. There are minor tectonic plates, but we just need to know the major one at this level of a study. Good, now that we know it, let's move on. What happens when pressure builds up at the boundaries of tectonic plates? You may want to look at that again. Look at the tectonic plates and you want to see these boundaries. Look at the boundaries. You can see pressure building up. You can see. So what happens when pressure builds up around these boundaries? It's important to think. Remember, this is a thinking scientific session. Okay. So you think closely. What really happens, Mr. Matthew? Two things happen. Two things happen. Okay, it's either we have what you call your earthquake. If it's too much, the earth trembles. Yeah, so earthquake is as a result of pressure built around tectonic boundaries. This is a graphic illustration. What do you see? This is like a tectonic plate. This is another, and this is a common boundary, which you don't seem to see, but it does exist. Okay, when there is so much pressure, Look around here, when there is so much pressure, at one point, there is this massive shake as a result of the land trying to shift or the crust shifting against each other. And that causes what you call earthquake. If the quakes occur underneath a water body like an ocean, we call it a tsunami. So take note, a tsunami is a type of earthquake that occurs underwater. Another thing is the volcanic eruption. When there is so much pressure, it could pull out or push out the magma in the earth crust to the surface. And that is what is called volcano. 
No, you don't want to imagine that. Look at what is right in front of you. You don't want to imagine that. So, the two things that could happen as a result of so much pressure built around tectonic plates are number one, earthquakes or volcanoes. Remember, earthquakes underwater, we refer to them as tsunami. Beautiful. So now we know this. It's time to move on. Remember, this is Martin Science Clinic Daily for children ages 7 to 14. Feel free to contact me or read me via through WhatsApp or via our social media handles on Facebook and YouTube, the same name, at Maths and Science Clinic Daily. Just search on your search bar on YouTube, at Math and Science Clinic Daily. You have me. Please do well to follow on social media, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and remember to click on the notification bell. Thank you. So what have we learned so far? Let's have the keywords. Crust, the mantle, core, going on tectonic plates, we have the seismograph, and earthquakes. What else? Volcano. Remember this? Crust, mantle, core, tectonic plates, seismograph, earthquake, and volcano. Hey, Mr. Matthew, I'm seeing the word seismograph. What is that? Okay, I've got to explain this right now. Remember, it's science time. So let's do this explanation. Seismology is the study of earthquake and seismic activities or seismic waves. Again, I repeat, seismology is the study of earthquakes and seismic activities. Okay, a chart that represents the magnitude of earthquake is called a seismograph. It could also be the machine that is used to produce that graph. So I repeat, the chart that represents the magnitude of the earthquake or the seismic wave is called the seismograph. The machine that does that is also called the seismograph. Okay, so that is what a seismograph is. And someone who studies seismology, who specializes in the study of earthquake, is called a seismologist. Take note of that. Someone who studies seismology or specializes in the study of earthquakes is called a seismologist. How about someone who studies volcanoes? A scientist who specializes in volcanic study is called a volcanologist. So now it's time to go. We have just two minutes. Let's see what we do with this. Investigating earthquakes and volcanoes. Year 9 students are planning a safe four-month trip to study rocks around an earthquake-prone area next year as part of a seismology study. They visit the government geostation located around a major tectonic boundary. They found a prediction seismograph of the region for next year. For next year, they are looking at a seismograph based on prediction, and this is what they see. Study it carefully from January to December. What does this mean? Just look at the graph, and I'm going to do the explanation now. Okay, number one, what is seismology? It's simple. Seismology is the scientific study of earthquakes and seismic activities. Number two, states to dangerous phenomena that can result from tectonic plates. You know them, right? They are earthquakes and volcanic eruption. Beautiful. Number three, or C, what are the seven major tectonic plates? Yeah, seven major tectonic plates. Let's have them. We have the Eurasian plate, the Indo-Australian plate, the Antarctic plate, African plate, the North American plate, the South American plate, and the Pacific plate. You may want to pause this and go over them again. D, from the seismic graph, suggest the four safest months of the year to embark on the field trip. A, the four safest months of the year. If we, if we look at the seismic graph, the points of high magnitude, that is where there is so much line displacement, okay, up and down, that's where you have high seismic activities and there's most likely to be earthquake around that period. But if you look towards the end of the year, Okay, you may want to pause this video, then go back again there and look at it. It's mild. So the safest should be where we have that mild activities. So in this case, I should be looking at September, October, November, and December. Beautiful. Earthquakes involve the earth crust, state the other layers of the earth, which of the layers is made of molten iron, and which of the layers is artist. These are the three layers. 
Martin and the artists. So thank you.